In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it, and the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. I want to welcome you to our worship on this Christmas Eve here late in the night. I've been vaccinated and boosted and took my rapid test this afternoon. We've prepared this space and you've come wearing masks and we've even got little cups there in your pews you can use to snuff out the candles after we sing Silent Night without removing your masks. Or perhaps you're joining us from home watching by live stream because for one of any number of reasons it made more sense this year. I welcome you all into our midst as we worship tonight. If you're participating from home, you're going to want to find a candle so that you can light it and sing with us when we get to that time in the service. And we also invite you to find communion elements from your home, any kind of bread or juice that you can use to celebrate sacrament with us. If you're here in this room, I invite you to join us as much as you're ready and able to join your heart to mine as we pray and sing and celebrate on this holy night. The music we have to share is so beautiful, and the scripture reads as poetry that reminds us of a gift, both mysterious and beautiful. I am grateful that you are here. We're a congregation that celebrates the diversity of people who are welcomed into the body of Christ. We give thanks for diversity of age and race, of gender identity and sexual orientation, believing that each one of us bears a particular uh, beauty that shines with God's image. You are welcome in this place, and I'm grateful you've chosen to worship with us this special evening. And tonight, and always, may the peace of Christ be with you.
Tonight, as we light the Christ candle in our Advent wreath, we pray. God of mindfulness, shalom, delight, and compassion. God of Mary and Joseph, the shepherds and the magi, the powerful and the dispossessed. We thank you and praise you for being a God of the shadows. We thank you and praise you for bringing hope where there is despair, peace where there is conflict, joy where there is sorrow, and love where there is hate or indifference. Give us the grace and wisdom, the courage and boldness to follow you and do the same. Thank you for coming to dwell with us, to wake us up, calm us down, and love us back to live. Come, Jesus, come. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of dark deepness, darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice because you, as with joy, as the harvest, as people exalt when divided plunder, for the yoke of their burden and the bear across their shoulders. The rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian for all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. 
Y'all have to forgive me, I don't have all my contacts. <laughs> For a child has been born. You guys have to really forgive me, my sight. <clears throat> for a child has been born for us, great to us, authority, bear with me one moment. I thank you guys for your patience. And we're going to start over. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalt when divided plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have bro broken as on the day of Midian for all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thank you.
may be seated. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. 
For see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see the things that have taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known, that they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them.
we celebrate this Christmas evening, it strikes me again how this story holds together things that seem to be in tension with one another. The beauty of this sanctuary, especially in the night when the light shines off the glory window behind our altar, as the candlelight makes and marks this space as especially holy, as your presence on this late evening brings the very image of God into this place. All these things sparkle with a kind of elegance that, though beautifully elegant, uh, is not yet even approaching the majesty of God, but it speaks with this beauty, this wonder, this elegance. And at the same time, the story that we share is a story with rough edges, a baby born and laid in a manger, shepherds out in the fields drawn in to come visit, It's a story set in a particular time and location. The scripture tells us about the governor ordering a census. We're reminded that Mary and Joseph were subjects of a Roman empire where they held little power and lived under the thumb of oppression. It's into this messy, difficult, complicated world, a world of real struggle and oppression, that Jesus is born. So we hold together elegance and majesty and the rough edges of reality these days as we continue to navigate what it means to live as a community of faith as individuals in this world during a time of pandemic we struggle with how to make moments holy while we also respect the limitations of this time And I'm struck with the tension that exists as we as a people try to do our part to protect one another's health and the health of the whole community. How we restrict our movements and limit our contact with others. There's a danger in this time of limitation that we might begin to corrode our hearts as we look at other people as a danger and a threat It has the possibility of changing how we see our neighbor. Ironically, as we try to protect the health of strangers and neighbors by separating ourselves from each other, there's this tension then between our work of necessarily isolating and protecting and reaching out in concern and compassion and service to others. There is in our Christian story this wild idea that when we offer assistance to another in need, when we offer food to the hungry and shelter to the unhoused, when we sit with the lonely or visit the imprisoned, we're not only helping them, but our service to them if we believe the gospel of Matthew, is service to Christ. It's not just the neighbor that we help, but we're offering love directly to God. And so the call of our faith is to be people who reach out in compassion to others, who extend ourselves in care for the community around us, even those whose names we do not know, those who struggle and suffer around us. This Christmas, then, I pray that our hearts would be softened by this wild story of salvation coming through a tiny child who was born. And Celeste, I'm so grateful that you slowed us down and made sure that we heard those beautiful words from the prophet Isaiah that remind us that this story, that this child who is born is one who comes to liberate, to break the yoke that is born on us to break the rod of the oppressor and to set free the children of God. Our story is a story of liberation, of being set free by amazing love and being called to be sure that we set others free as well. This Christmas, I hope you know the depth of God's love for you. A love, a divine love that became particular as it took the form of a baby born who was God's own self enfleshed in this world. An affirmation of this world 
and an affirmation that our flesh, that this world bears divine image, that we are holy. Through the season of Advent and Christmas, our congregation, both our sanctuary and loft congregations, have been imagining what it means to be called to house the holy, knowing that we're invited to participate in the miracle of Christmas by being a place, a people, a community into which Christ can be born, that we, like that manger, might offer however meager and insufficient our part in providing a place, a location, a context into which divine love might come to be housed and find shelter and find life and flourish, to find liberation and hope for the kingdom of God. We're called to be the people in whom Christ takes up residency, the community that offers shelter to those in need. And so as we gather in this elegant space, we have on the cover of our worship guide tonight a work of art by contemporary artist Kelly Lattimore. It's the same image that's hung on the wall of our churchyard through the season of Advent that imagines the Holy Family as an unhoused family in our own community. It's an invitation to be people who see the Holy present around us in every stranger we meet, in every person we encounter. And the challenge before us this Christmas night is to live as those whose hearts are soft and tender, are open and ready to extend out to make space, real shelter, to offer care and compassion and community for all who are in need in our world. That not only our beautiful sanctuaries, but the whole of our world would be a home for the holy this Christmas night, I hope that you feel the gift of holiness here in this place, in yourself and in the people around you, in the beauty of candlelight and song. But I invite you to carry that gift out as well, that we together might be people ready to recognize and offer shelter to the holy everywhere where it is to be found, which is everywhere here in our world. May it be so. Amen.
on this night of wonder and making room of birthing and blessing. Let us prepare space in our hearts and spirits for the indwelling God of all. In this moment, we open the doors of our hearts to honesty before God about what we've done and left undone that created less hope in a hurting world. Let us breathe out this regret and breathe in the life-giving, forgiving spirit of God. And out again with the peace of Christ. In this moment, we open the doors of our lives to the call of the spirit, inviting us to become more than we can ask or imagine. Let us breathe out our fear and breathe in the courage of the spirit of God and out again with the peace of Christ. In this moment, we open the doors of this church, filling it with the compassion of Christ for those who are struggling. We remember and we pray for all those who are suffering economic hardship and insecurity in basic needs. May abundance be shared. We remember and pray for those who are suffering emotionally, finding it difficult to cope. May pass open and hope return. We remember and pray for those who are suffering illness or injury. May healing abound. We remember and pray for those who are suffering loneliness and isolation. May companionship and solace arrive. We remember and pray for those who are suffering discrimination, fear, violence. May they know respect, respite, and safety. May the advent of compassion be born in us, reside within us, move outward from us, to meet the needs of the world, making a house for the holy that is each and every child of God. Amen. As we prepare to share in the sacrament of Holy Communion, I want you to know that this is Christ's table and all are welcome here you don't need to be a member of this church or of any particular church to share this sacrament of grace. If you're at home, I do hope you'll find elements where you are so that you might participate. I invite you to join me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to be thankful and praise. It always, it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, birthing God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in our mother's womb, a house of the holy, growing us in your image. We have not always understood ourselves as sacred creation, a place for the dwelling of the holy inside of us. We have not always seen that in others. When we turn away from each other and from you, your love remains steadfast. You deliver us from the captivity of isolation and fear, make covenant to be our steadfast indwelling God, and continue to speak to us through prophetic utterance in the spirit and through the people. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the midst of a time of despair, oppression, division, and fear, your gestation in the house of a holy womb, which brought Jesus the Christ into this world. 
Into the world came a life dedicated and anointed by the Spirit to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would share, save your people, a common birth for a common people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and sat in houses at table with those who suffer and those who perpetuated suffering, laying bare complicity and compassion. His baptism, ministry, death, and resurrection gave the blueprints for the building of the church community. You made a new covenant with us to be midwives by water and the spirit, birthing more hope, more peace, more joy, more love into this world, making more room in this house, at this table for all. In another house on another night, the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, broke it, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is has risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Open our hearts in and through this act so that we will open our doors to the world as the body of Christ redeemed by his love. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to share in the sacrament of communion tonight. We have these prepackaged communion elements available. If you're ready to receive communion, I invite you to come forward as you will to receive one and then step to the side to remove your mask and receive the elements. It has two layers, uh, bread and then the cup to drink. You're welcome also to come and sit in the front row of the seats in the chancel if that would be a meaningful place for you to sit and pray. During this time, we'll sing some carols together. I invite you to come whenever you're ready and ask you to keep uh, some distance from one another to protect one another's health. The table is set and you are welcome.
as we have feasted at this table of grace, of mercy and hope, let us be mindful that as we move into this new way of being, that we are called to house God's holiness, but not to hoard it, to open doors and hearts and possibilities for all creation as we seek God's liberating love and justice in our lives and in our world. May we remember Christ today and every day as we walk in this way. Amen. Before we share in candlelight as we sing Silent Night, I want to invite you to participate in our Christmas offering. We have offering plates in the back of our sanctuary, which you'll see on your way out. You can also give online at westwoodumc.org slash give. Our Christmas offering this year is going directly to meet the needs of people in our community who are struggling. It's going to be shared between the Echo Park Refugee Welcome Center and our own congregation's COVID relief fund. Both give directly to people in need in our community. And so as you uh, share generosity this Christmas, I'm glad that we can combine our gifts together to meet some of the needs of our community as a part of our celebration. Now is the time, though, for sharing candlelight during Silent Night. As the music begins, we will move down the center aisle with candlelight to share with you. As uh, those holding the candlelight offer it to your row, I invite the person closest to the center aisle to tip their candle to receive the light. And then once your candle's lit, it ask you to hold it upright and let someone else tip their candle to light from you. We'll pass the candlelight down the row. Let us sing and share in candlelight together now.
tonight when you're ready to extinguish your candle, I invite you to use the little cups that are in the trays in front of you. You can tip it over the top of your candle to extinguish the flame. But for the moment, I invite you to hold the flame in front of your face so that you can see the world around in the glow of this beautiful light, how the world is changed by the presence of that glow. May you bear the light of Christ as you go out from this place. May it allow you to see your own face and the face of everyone you encounter as holy. Be in peace this night and all. Merry Christmas. Amen. Mm -hmm.